Hi there, everybody. Well, we're on um, shape session three now, and uh, shape session three looks at our personality and how God shapes our purpose around our personality. Are we particularly energised by, by things, by people, by ideas, or by information? How has God created our character to be? Are we a particularly caring person? Someone who gives, has a great attention to detail? Someone who is generous, encouraging, analytical, creative? Again, we, we stress in this section that um, the beauty that we're all created differently, that we're all different parts of the body, and that God uses our differences for different purposes. But a little, little bit of an extra that comes in this session is a, a really interesting question of how our personality and character, um, how that affects the way that we connect with God. Just a, a bit of an introduction to this. When I was a teacher uh, many years ago, I used to help teachers learn how to teach and particularly how students to learn. And we talked a lot about learning styles that some pupils were kinesthetic learners. They liked doing things with their hands and that helped them learn. Some were auditory learners. They, they needed to hear things and that connected to their brains. Others were visual learners that they needed to see pictures and they would remember pictures and see the pictures and that would help them learn. And we, we therefore learned as teachers that we were to teach in different ways to them so that actually those who are kinesthetic learners were motivated and helped to learn as much as those who are auditory or visual learners in the classroom. And I think spiritual, um, the way we relate to God spiritually can be a bit like this as well, that, that we're all different. And so there's, we're not all a one size fits all model of how we connect with God. We all connect with God in, in different ways. Perhaps if you're an extrovert, you connect with God, particularly when you're with others, uh, that you need others um, to connect with. And some of you particularly have found that during the pandemic, that it's been really hard worshipping on your own and not connecting in life groups in person because you need other people to connect with. Other people who are introverts will connect with God much more naturally on their own, in silence, in contemplation, maybe through reading or looking at a picture, for example. And I found this idea of spiritual styles and what helps us most connect with God really helpful and really freeing to think that we don't all have to connect with God in the same way. Last week when I was on retreat, for example, I really found myself connecting with God when I was walking along the mountaintops on, on a long walk out there in nature. That's a special place for me, a place where I draw close to God's. And I want to talk to you about a book which I found helpful, which is this book called uh, Sacred Pathways. Discover your path to God, discover, discover your soul's path to God by a guy called Gary Thomas. And I found this a really interesting book. In, in this, he describes that we're all different and we connect with God in different ways according to our personality and character. And he highlights particularly nine different ways which people can particularly connect with God. He talks about naturalists, uh, which is a, a way of connecting to God through nature and the outdoors, a bit like what I was saying about being on the top of the mountains. Sensates, uh, connecting to God through our senses, particularly through feeling things, perhaps feeling things deep in a, a big charismatic worship session talks about traditionalists who connect to God well through ritual and symbols and maybe set prayers and repetition. Ascetics who connect to God through solitude and simplicity. Activists, and I know there are a few of these in church, who actually find themselves saying, I connect to God most when I'm doing something, when I'm bringing about social change, when I'm fighting a cause, fighting for justice with others. Caregivers, many of those too, who find they connect to God most through caring for others and acts of service. Then he talks about enthusiasts connecting to God through mystery and celebration. Contemplatives connecting to God through adoration and heartfelt devotion and maybe again sort of silence. Intellectuals is the final one, which is connecting to God through the mind, perhaps particularly by reading theological books. That's where people most connect with God. 
And they're the different nine ways which he talks about. And, you know, this isn't about putting us in a box and saying, you know, this is who I am. This is the one and only way I can connect with God. Because we can all connect with God in a variety of ways. But it is a way of saying that this is a way or a place where I often have found I connect with God particularly strongly. And I think this can help us at times when maybe we're feeling far from God, for example. You know, in those times, God may have felt really quite absent. And in those times, what, what might be good to do is to go back and remember where are the places where you found, particularly in the past, God connected with you strongly? What helps you connect with God? Going for a long walk, maybe, or taking time out to sit in silence or using set prayers or traditions. Do whatever helps you most. And then we can try that way to try to connect with God again. And it's also useful, I think, to think about our general rhythms, uh, daily and weekly patterns of being with God. You know, many of us may well have been brought up being told you must have a quiet time at 6.30 every morning and you must read your Bible for 20 minutes, read your Bible notes and then pray for 10 minutes too. Uh, And you know, that's really important you know I was brought up on that and that is really important I've been very grateful for those rhythms which I was got into but I think sometimes looking back I have just think I've done my quiet time I'm now going to go into the day energized with God as if this was some sort of spiritual chocolate bar to give us our boost of energy to get us through the day and then often I've not thought about God until I do my quiet time the next morning and now I think I just connect with God throughout the day in different ways connecting in scripture and prayer is absolutely vital but we can do that in different ways Uh, maybe some people for example might find it good to take a particular bible verse and go for a long walk maybe whilst walking the dog and just meditate on that one verse For some others, it might be listening to Lectio 365 or an app like that, where actually, particularly if you're an auditory learner, actually that that, that goes in much more. Or others might use their creative skills to draw a picture to reflect on some aspect of scripture or God's character. You see, there are different ways of engaging with God through scripture and prayer. And I think if we think about what spiritual pathways help us most to connect with God, then maybe this will help us structure our rhythms, our week, so that we're connecting regularly in the way which particularly draws us to God. So on my retreat last week, you know, I decided, it reminded me that how much I connect with God when I am walking and and praying out in nature, particularly on top of a hill or top of a mountain. And uh, so I decided last week that I, I need to build in an hour or so each week where I specifically go off for a prayer walk on top of the Mulvans. Um, where I can just be with God without any other distractions, maybe read scripture beforehand and meditate on that. And I'm going to really try and do that and, and find that regular slot in my diary to do that each week in uh, the next few weeks and just see what difference it makes. And I think that's also why we as a church try to put on a variety of different ways of connecting with God, not just services on a Sunday and with those some are quieter and more traditional for people who find it helpful to connect in that way and others are louder and more contemporary for those who want to connect in that way but we also seek to offer a variety of things things like life group where we can learn together and learn from each other the waiting room is a beautiful example of this uh, which for some not everybody but for some is a really special place for the contemplatives to come and sit in silence and meet with God in that special place. Thinking of different ministries to serve, as we serve in the different ministries across our churches, now as we serve with those, we connect with God in those too. And maybe we need to think of more diverse things still. I'd love to do in the the next few weeks a a little um, walking retreat, not just a retreat sitting in a building, but actually a walk where we walk up together on the Malvern Hills and every so often we stop and read some scripture and have a time of reflecting on our own and sharing some of the things I was doing on retreat last week, maybe. So more of that to come. So I'd really encourage you to reflect on this concept. Which of these pathways do you particularly relate to and find helpful to you to connect with God? And how can you put that into practice in your daily, weekly, monthly lives to do that? 
And the other thing is, I think it also takes away some of the guilt of when we're feeling I should be able to connect with God in, in this sort of way. You know, sometimes pray, maybe many of us, and I count myself too, sometimes we can feel inadequate if we don't spend an hour in prayer in silence every day, um, like some people seem to be able to. You know, I, I'm not very good at doing that, and many of you probably aren't either. Or if we don't have great experiences in our worship services, that we don't feel things really deeply when others around us seem to be feeling God's presence here, there and everywhere. You know, maybe it's just because God's made us different. And that God's made us to connect with him strongly in different ways. And we need to be okay with that. And we need to be released from feeling any judgment or any inferiority or any guilt over that. And press into the ways and places where we do connect with God. On the shape page of uh, the website, you can find out more details of this, uh, this book. And uh, some links too to find out more, including a link to a little online quiz, which might help you. It only takes about 10 minutes help you identify your own spiritual style. So why don't you give it a try and see where you, what you come out as and then think, how can I do things differently in my week to give me an opportunity to connect deeply with God in those ways which are most useful for me? So I hope that's a helpful thought. Um, I'd love to talk more about it. If anyone wants to borrow the book from me, then do. But I found this really helpful and really freeing and really releasing to engage with God in the ways which God has created us to, according to our personality and our character.